And we're off. Right, so uh, let's look at a bit of data. You can do this with me now. So I'm on page 11. I'm, I'm teaching in a slightly different order from the notes. So I'm on page 11 of the... Um, Books there. Um, oh, if I could bring it up on here as well. Oh. Uh, one there. Yep. Top. Um, so the data on page eleven is. Yeah. You want? Uh, for, for three different experiments where we're changing the concentration of thiosulfate and the concentration of HCl. Is everyone with me on page 11? It says, let's imagine that we do this and look at some data. So we're going to do, do the reaction of thiosulfate and HCl. We've got some way of measuring rate. Let's not worry too much about what that is. And we do the experiment with, with uh, three different experiments with different concentrations. So there, so 0 0.1, um, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and then we've got a concentration of HCl, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0.2. And then we've got rate. Okay, so we do the experiment with, with concentrations of 0 0.1, and we get a rate 4.8 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay, great. Uh, let's do it again, but this time we've doubled the concentration of thiosulfate. And we have a look at the rate for that reaction. So concentration of thiosulfate has been doubled. What's happened to the rate there? Double. It's been doubled, 4.8 to 9.6. It's gone up by uh, times 2. So what you say has an order of 1. So that's, that is first order. That's a first order reaction where if the concentration doubles, the rate doubles. Okay, so we've got... That, that is what a first order reaction would do. First order, they go up in the same proportion. If one, if I times the concentration by 10, and the rate would go up by a factor of 10. If I halve the concentration, the rate would halve. We'd expect them to go up uh, and down in, in the same proportions with each other. Okay, so going from experiment two to experiment three, well, we're keeping the concentration of thiosulfate the same now, but now we're gonna double the concentration of HCl. What does that do to the rate? Nothing, because it has a zero. Okay, so that's done nothing. So we've doubled there, but there's been no change there. So that is, again, the, the definition of zero order. So if concentration changes any kind of change and rate doesn't, then that's our zero order relationship. Zero order with respect to HCl. First order with respect to sodium thiosulfate. Okay, so we've got all the information we need from this table. Now we can write the rate equation. So let's do that. So rate is first order with respect to thiosulfate, so I'm going to put that in the rate equation either to the power of 1 or just leave it as it is. And then I could either write HCl to the power of 0 or just leave it out because that's, that's still correct. Uh, okay, okay. Let's do something a little bit different now. Um, we've got our rate equation. We've got some data. Let's work out K. So if we, as soon as we've got some data for concentration and, and rate, we can find out K. K is a constant, of course, so it should be the same for every single reaction. 
but let's take the, the top line of data there. Um, first thing I'm going to do is rearrange my equation to make rate the uh, sorry to make k the subject. And then we're going to put in some values. So I'm just going to use the top line of data. 4.8 times 10 to the minus 3 concentration of thiosulfate 0.1. Okay. okay. For a fairly simple rate equation, it's not particularly difficult to find K. We'll do some tougher examples in a moment. But let's just focus on units before we do that. What are the units of K? Now you might remember when we were doing the equilibrium constant, that the units of the equilibrium constant change depending on the equation that, that we're getting it from. And, and little k, the rate constant, is the same. The, the units are going to vary depending on the, the, the form of the rate equation. So the way I, I'd suggest you solve it is you, you take the units of, of rate and concentration and you feed them into your equation. So units of rate generally will be given to you in the exam. Mole per dm cubed per second, that goes on the top. And then units of concentration, mole per dm cubed, go on the bottom. And then we do whatever cancelling that we would have to do, just like solving any kind of algebra or simplifying any kind of algebra equation. How does that simplify? Seconds to the minus one. Just seconds to the minus one. Zero. Okay. So we've done, done a couple of things there. First of all, we've, we've looked at this data and, and how concentration changes and how rate changes to work out the rate order with respect to each of the different reactants. That's enabled us to formulate the rate equation. And then by substituting in the values, we can work out the value of K and also the units of K. All right, so let's do all of that again. For the second example on the page there. And I know that it's, it's all written out, obviously, in the text, but I'm going to go through it go through it with you. So this time we've just got, we've got A, B, and C, because that, that makes it easier. So we've got concentration of A, 0 0.04, 0 0.06, 0 0.08. Concentration of B, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.10. And then we've got rate. 1.6, 2.4, I've kind of been kind there. I've put 12.8 times 10 to the minus 3 just because it, it makes it a bit easier to work with the numbers. But they probably won't do that in the exam. They'll say 1.28 times 10 to the minus 2. But it just enables us to instantly compare the values. Okay, so let's let's have a look. Um, so for going from experiments one to two, well, A is going up and B isn't, so that that's helpful. There's only one thing changing from experiment one to two, so that's a good good bit of data to start with. Uh, how much is A going up by? 1.5, it's like half as much again, isn't it? So how much is the rate going up by? 1.5. Okay, that makes it nice and easy. So if the rate is going up in the same proportion as the, uh, as the concentration, that's our understanding of first order. So first order with respect to concentration of A. OK, 
Okay, let's have a look at B then. So if I look at experiment one and experiment three, A is doubling. So I would expect the rate to double just because of A. So let's kind of, kind of do that in our heads maybe. So 1.6 times 10 to the minus three, if A was the only thing that was changing, I would expect it to be 3.2 times 10 to the minus three. Two cubes. Hey? The two cubes, so you get like times by eight, times by eight. That, that's right, yeah. So the, the difference between 3.2 and 12.8 is, you just said four. it. Times of four. So, so it's gone up by a factor of two, but we know that that's because of A changing. But it's also gone up by a factor of four. So the times two is from A. The times four, therefore, must all come from B because we've already accounted for the times two. So it's gone up by a factor of four from B, but if we look at the change for B, it's only doubled. So what does this mean? Well, if concentration's doubled and the rate has gone up by four, two squared is four, so it's second order. If, if B had tripled times three, then the rate would have gone up by If that's tripled, the rate would go up by nine. nine. Yeah. If rate's halved, rate would quarter. Quarter. Okay. So it's always it's always the proportion squared. Okay. So let's write our rate equation now for a and b. Abraham, have you got a rate equation for us? A is base order, so A to the uh, power of 1. Yeah, or we can just leave it as it is, that's fine. And then B to the 2. That's it. Okay. So using that, that top line of data there, experiment 1, can you now work out a value of k for me and determine its units, please. Okay. So I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to rearrange k equals rate over a, b squared. So substituting in these values, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 3 over 0 0.04 times 0 0.05 squared. What's our value for that? 16. 16. What are the units? Mole, Mole minus 2, minus two, minus two, two minus DM6, DM6, S minus 2. So it's <laughs> Mole per diem cube per second on the top. Mole per diem cubed times mole per diem cubed squared on the bottom. So we've got mole per diem cubed will cancel. So seconds to minus one over mole per diem cubed squared. Well, mole per diem cubed squared is moles squared diem minus six. One over moles squared will be mole minus two. 1 over dm minus 6 will be dm plus 6. So we'll end up with mole minus 2 dm plus 6 s to the minus 1. Okay. Right, so there was another one on the, on the overhead there. Um, again, show how these data can be used to deduce the rate expression for the reaction between A and B. So have a look at that, see how far you get. I'll put the numbers up on here so I can... Right on it. Halves, yeah. Oh, I can't like 
then one to three is five six, six yeah so it's that's kind of a like, I call it third order. Kind of <laughs> 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 third order. No, third order, great order is going to be one of three numbers, zero, one, or two. Wait, is it hard? What order is that? It depends on the effect. It depends on the effect on the rate. Mm. Oh, you got a point there, Ellen. You got a point there. Okay. Um, Everyone's better than you. So again, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna translate Remember, it's these. it's squares. It times this by nine, so it's an order of two. Yeah, how much do you The two point one change, I noticed them balance. I would say again, second order, second order reactants are incredibly rare, except in A level questions where they seem to appear most, most questions, um, but actually in life. They're very rare. We will talk about where, where a second order reaction, uh, second order reactant can come from. Eight times by six, and this times by eighteen. Because it times by four, because it's square. So, like, what order is that? Half. Seven. Half. Half. What's your own point? If these times by a half, that makes it. So six times a half is three. And eight divided by three is still six. Again, it's multiple. Hold on. Eight times. Again, it is square. Okay, that's great. Now give me a use the first line of data to work yeah. out the value for K. Uh, you got a red equation, yeah? So that times is by three, that times is by nine. So you can use about three down. Um, three squared is nine. Okay. So tells you that. Second order. Second order. Okay. Now you know that. Let's look at the next few sets of data. 0.36 to 0.72. Times by two. So what would happen to the rate if that was the only change? Okay. So double. Yeah, so double. Now we've got another second order. So yeah, so times by four. Four. Okay. So if it's five times four, it'll be it'll be six point three point seven. So. So how does that value compare to the value that you would get if A was the only change? Oh, what happens to concentration B? Also more. Okay, so if that's half, then that's half. Well, no, we have a similar two, but we have a similar two. That's like, you uh, it might order to one. Oh, I'm just looking at these. 
these two. That's gone up by a factor of two. That's, yeah. that's, that's gone up by a factor of two. And we know A is second Same order. Yeah. Because that turns three by the chemistry. Nine. Then yeah. this yeah. must go up by. No, how much does it go up by? If that's double, how much does the rate go up by? For second order. Perfect. Let's imagine it has gone up. Nah, you should. No, it's 1.89. Why do you have a four? No, I've got it. Because you look at the second order. This is the second order. So that's going to be the second order. And the primal, we haven't got that. We've got 3,076. But this one, 3,076. So it's only there. It's one. 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 The second oh, yeah. Yeah. What did you say? It's actually yeah. so uh, two. In other words, no what is it's, it's gone up by a factor of four. And it's, it's gone down by a factor of four. It's gone down by a factor of half. It's gone down by a factor of half. It's gone down by a factor of half. Times well. four from this. So that's half. Times and half. That's half. Mm. Is it saying it's times it's two? Say I'll read it again. So I'll make it to average. First order because this is half. Okay. Meaning this is half. All right, um, didn't mean to leave the thing running, but we've just got a long video now. Um, hello, sorry for keeping you waiting. The, um, uh, the, the, the logic here, I don't know who I was talking to there. The logic here is that uh, B hasn't changed from experiment one to two. That's gone up by three. That's gone up by nine. So 3 squared is 9, so we can see that it's second order with respect to A. That's the easy bit. The harder bit is spotting, let me other color, spotting what's happened to B. So I'm just going to do A first. So from here to here, A is doubled. If A was the only thing changing, what would happen to work the rate as a result of a doubling? Times by four. Times four. Four. Okay. Right, let's, let's imagine we do that. It will be seven point something. That's obviously not the rate we've got. The rate we've got is that halved. So it's gone up by four and it's halved. In, in the same kind of thing. It's gone up by four because we've doubled a. So that times half must be because of the change in B. Well, let's have a look at the change in B. Well, that's halved as well. So if that's halved and the rate's halved as a result of that change, then it must be first order with respect to B. So it's A squared B to the one, or we can just leave it as it is. Anybody got a value for K for that? Have you used this line of data? Yeah. Oh, I'm thinking of the next one. I thought I knew the answer to it, but maybe that's that's the next question I've done. Say again. Does everyone else get that? Okay, I've got the wrong number in my head. Um, to be really picky, and let's face it, the A level examiners will be. All the data is to, sorry, all the concentration data is to two sig figs. So our answer should probably be to two sig figs as well. What are the units? It's mole minus the m6. Yeah, because the rate equation's in the, in the same form as the last one, we've got a first and a second order in there. Of course, the units will be the same as the last example as well. Okay, um, I think that's a good place to stop. Could you do uh, exercise one for us, please? That, thank you.